Hi guys, what's up? Welcome to Freelance Friday. Today I'm going to be talking about Squarespace. Now if you haven't started a Squarespace website yet, it's super, super easy and user friendly. I highly recommend Squarespace as a go-to for building your own website. I've used WordPress in the past and honestly, if you're looking for user-friendly, like I have no idea where to start, I think that Squarespace is the way to go. I do have a whole lesson on building a blog on Squarespace in my new course, Money Making Micro Influencer. So if you guys are interested in signing up, you can do that and get that little 101 before you watch this video. But if you already have a website or if you're pretty confident in your abilities to build on your own, just keep watching for five little hacks, if you will, that I use to kind of boost up my Squarespace site. All right, so the first thing is to install a chat box onto your website. This is optional, it depends on if you actually have someone or if you yourself are available to manage the chats that come in. But I think that if you are a service-based website, so like for me, doing social media management stuff, and even for myself, for my personal website as an influencer, it has helped me so much form connections with potential clients or potential sponsors. The chat box that I personally use is called Drift. I have also used Olark in the past. Both of them have free options, like I said, and I like it. I mean, Drift, I think, is really nice looking. It does pop up a little bit sooner than I would like it to, which I might be able to change if I upgraded. Not really sure. But besides that, I don't really have any complaints about it. Um, I actually, they have an app, so you download the app and you get the notifications on your phone. So it's basically like you're texting with anyone who comes in and chats with you. And on the free plan, you get 100 free chats per month, which I don't ever use because, you know, my, my I'm not like a huge website or anything like that. I was a little bit hesitant about putting it on because I'm like, what's really the point? You know, who's going to chat with me? It's just going to be weird people coming in to chat or, you know, people just trying to mess with me. But I've actually gotten so many sponsorships through Drift, through this chat, chat box. I'm obviously not gonna say the companies that came in, but the companies that I've gotten sponsorships with through Drift have actually been amazing, like really great companies. And they didn't, you could tell that they didn't really know how influencer marketing works. They came in and were like, hey, I'm like interested in working with an influencer, like how does this work? Or what do you propose? So there were people who didn't have a full like email, like they weren't ready to send me a professional email with an offer, but they wanted to sort of start a conversation. And it was nice because with Drift and using the app and being responsive and all that, I was able to just quickly be like, hey, it's super easy. Let me give you the 101 of how I work and give you an offer and really help you guide you through the, the process. And I ended up getting some amazing sponsorships. So just having that little signal that you're available to help without making it intimidating where they have to send you an email, I think it's nice and it's a free thing that you can do also for customers i've gotten a ton of customers come in on my business website and i highly recommend it second thing is kind of like a pet peeve for me honestly and it's so easy but i think a lot of people just don't know how to do it so i'm going to show you on my computer really quickly how to do both of these things i really encourage you to remove all of the squarespace branding from your website unless you really want to rep squarespace and like yeah, I rock with Squarespace, but I personally, you know, want it to look like my own website. And I think it looks a little bit amateurish if you have the Squarespace box, AKA the Favicon or Favicon, I don't know how you say it. I think it's Favicon, which is the little box like up in the cor top corner of the window. And if you have that little Squarespace box, that's like 101 that you haven't fully customized your website. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And then also, at the very bottom, like at the footer, it will usually say um, built by Squarespace or something like that. It's a really easy thing to remove. So let's go over to the computer and I'll show you quickly how to remove and change and customize both of those. So to edit your favicon and your footer and all of that, you're just going to go into the design section of your settings, then go to logo and title. And if you scroll down here for browser icon or favicon, favicon, I'm so sorry if I'm saying that wrong, that is where you'll see mine. So it gives you all the specs right in there. Basically, it just needs to be a PNG or an ICO format. Mine is a PNG. As you can see, it has the transparent background. And I actually just made this really quickly in PicMonkey. But an even simpler way to come up with that is to just go to this website, favicon, favicon, whatever, dash generator.org. I'm gonna list it down below in the description box. And you can either upload your image and convert it to the ICO ICO um, extension, or you can actually just browse the gallery. So I typed in anchor here. It's not gonna be the exact same one that I have, 
but it's pretty similar. And then what you can do is you can just download it and then upload it right here. And then you'll get this nice little icon. The footer usually is right around here and it'll say something like powered by Squarespace. To remove that, you'll also be in the design section of the settings. You'll go to Squarespace badge and then just make sure to click disable. Or if you would prefer to keep it on, you can change the colors here as well. Okay, third thing that I recommend, and this is really only if you're a lazy blogger like me. If you're a regular blogger, ignore this step, but remove the dates from your blog posts if you are lazy like me. <laughs> so I have actually contemplated, go, went back and forth many times about deleting the blog section of my website, and I think I actually am going to pretty soon because I don't update blog posts really at all. I wish I did, but I don't, I just never do. I have so many other outlets. I have my Instagram, my YouTube, Twitter, like those kind of all, all get priority over my blog posts. And so for a while, it was like this one blog post, my last blog post, which was a Toronto travel, travel guide kind of thing. And I went there in June and it's now October. And I'm like, okay, cool. It's saying June, 2017. Like anytime a new potential client, potential sponsor, anybody comes to my website and they're seeing June, they're like, okay, this is like not an active website. You know, she doesn't do posts anymore. She isn't a creator anymore. Or she just looks like she's not really into this, you know, if they didn't know anything else about me but my website and they hadn't seen my YouTube videos or anything else that I did. And so I decided to remove the dates because it makes the post sort of evergreen, if you will, and it makes it so that they're easy to recycle. You can repost them and it doesn't look weird that you're sharing a post from June. Um, and it just gives them a little bit more of a welcoming presence, I think, to, like I said, potential cl collaborations, sponsors, clients, whatever. It just makes it look a little bit less off-putting. So this is actually something that I had to spend a lot of time researching how to do. Depending on your theme, I think some of these Squarespace themes actually allow you to like toggle on and off, but mine unfortunately did not. So I had to go through and just Google. I know this is like super high tech, tech um, information, but just Google remove dates in blog for X theme and you should come up with a code hopefully um i'll try to leave the link where i figured out how to use how to remove mine in the description box in case you have the same theme as i do or it just works the same for you but i actually had to just do some coding into the header injector and everything worked out fine so number four a lot of people ask me about how i get some of the features like the highlight text feature when you are on a blog post and you start to highlight text you get like a little tweet box that comes up to make it really easy for people to share I have some social icons in the left pane that are not Squarespace provided. What else do I have? I used to have a pop-up, but I disabled that. So all those extra little things are actually from another free feature. It's called Sumo, and this is just a really great website. They have so many different features. You can do like um, pop-up bars, pop-up boxes, um, social icon shares, highlight text to tweet lead gen forms, I think that's a paid feature, but there's so many cool things. So check it out. All the features that I use on my website are free. I do not pay anything for Sumo. So it's sumo.com, link in the description box, hashtag not paid, hashtag not spawn, just sharing. Okay. <laughs> Last thing, it's kind of similar to Sumo, but it's the announcement bar in Squarespace. A lot of people don't know that this exists. I actually didn't know that it existed until pretty recently too, but it works pretty similarly to some of Sumo's features and it just is a little bar at the top of your website and you could put like whatever call to action you want. So I should actually update mine and have it go to my new course since I just launched. You know, if you have like a big launch or something that's really big or important that you want people to go to first, you could use that. So when they first go to your website, it pops up and they can click over to it and purchase or get in touch with you or whatever. It's a really cool feature that I think is very underused and is a really nice way to call attention to something that's very important instead of having to like sift through different navigations and blog posts and all of that. All you need to do to enable the announcement bar is go to the design section of your settings, click on announcement bar and click on enable. Once you click enable, you will go ahead and type in whatever information that you want. Then you can enable a click through URL just by clicking here, choose if you want to open in a new window or not and click save and this is what it's going to look like. So anywhere within the website, not on the cover page, but on like a blog page or on any other 
pages that I have here, this should show up right at the top. So it just looks really bold and big and it's gonna be the first thing that any visitor sees and then if they click on it, they'll be taken directly to the sales page there. I love Squarespace. I think that there's so much that you can do to it and there's even so much more customization that you can do besides these five tips, but I think these are good intro tips if you're looking to kind of customize and jazz up your site. So yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, thumbs up this video and tap that notification bell if you'd like to be notified whenever I post new videos. All my links will be in the description box as well as links to things that I mentioned in this video and hope you enjoyed. Bye.